Hey everybody. Hello. Did you miss us? We're back again for for Homestuck Monday. Wait, we missed the last one, right? I'm not. Maybe. Uh, we did. Yeah, okay, we yeah, we did. <laughs> we missed last week, but we're back. Yeah. And we're making oh. friends with a dragon. I'm very excited. I love she. Yeah. Oh, I've checked audio. Thank you. Okay. We all so sound sufficiently stupid. As it should be. Where is cat? Do show the thing. Hey OBS, show the thing. It's right there. I know you see it. There you go. Thank you OBS. I just had to be polite. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Da -da -da. Make sure other shit's muted. All right. Cool. Peppercast. Uh, <laughs> it's time. time. It's a cool, breezy evening. Violet leaves crunch under your feet as you stroll casually through a dense and inviting forest. Not an environment you're used to on this planet, that's for sure. You should be lapping up this serenity like a thirsty dog at a zen fountain. Instead, you're brooding. Whoa. So, so many new friends, all of them a special breed of sad. You don't like seeing sad people, so you've done everything in your power to fix them. Slumber party. <laughs> matchmaking. Yeah, fix their sadness. Thro wow. <laughs> throwing a giant spider into a volcano. The smiles your new friends greet you with are all the proof you need that you've been doing good work. Also, once again, the matchmaking of that end, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> and yet... You can't help but wonder how much of a difference any of this really makes. Especially on Alternia. You've gathered that even if one of these kids avoids being murdered by an insectoid eugenics robot, They'll just wind up conscripted into a lifetime of military service under a colonial empire. Which makes it really hard to believe that inducing a few bouts of revelatory catharsis will ultimately amount to much. It's a depressing thought, and you're not entirely sure what to do with it. Which is why you came out here. Nothing better for the soul than a nature hike, right? Maybe after a nice long walk, you'll come out right as... Hey, is that a treehouse? Hmm. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch is right, criminal. Oh, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Great. More shenanigans. I love her first thing was woo. Yeah. Woo. 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 What is going on? I, since you guys can't see it, I would like everyone to know that whenever I do the ho I do that like Spongebob caveman ho <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I can oh, I picture it perfectly. I, I, like, I like slink back in my head and just like ho 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 <laughs> that was absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, bro. Stay straight with just that, please. Yeah, that's that's the rest of it. We all go. Huh? Someone make a clip of that. Yeah, <laughs> just the. Huh, huh, huh. Like, I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> You're a big boy, Craig. You can make a clip. I believe in yeah. you. No, uh, my tummy hurts. I can't make a clip. Oh, okay. I'll do it after the stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you won't lie and say the prospect of making friends with a spooky shark in glaringly red shades isn't appealing, but criminal doesn't leave a great taste in your mouth. When you try to move, well, you don't, because you're tied to a chair. Strike two on the bad taste scorecard. Probably shouldn't stick around for strike three. In a moment of uncharacteristic self-preservation, you close your eyes and attempt to zap away. But... you can't? Your head hurts and your vision is still kinda hazy, which might imply brain damage on account of your surprise wanging. 
With your luck, that probably means your superpowers are permanently broken. Typical. Looking up at your captor again, you can't help thinking the specs are a bit extra. What kind of loser this wears... Hmm? This isn't captor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind of loser wears big angular sunglasses like that anyway? You sir... Uh, you'd certainly be one to judge if you had the legal authority to do so. A fashionable dress like this with, bl with blood as deliciously red as yours. The hypocrisy on you stings like a fragrant puss. Gross. Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> I am MSPA reader. <laughs> Jeez, what's up with these aliens and their hangups about blood? Hang-ups. Gallows humor is an admirable quality. But such crowd-pleasing theatrics will not spare you from the full weight of... The law! Oh, they made her round! Yeah. <laughs> A bizarre tableau unfolds before you. Stuffed dragons and benchin... In ben... In but... But... Stuffed dragons and benches, big angry monster, empty noose dangling next to a window. Looks like you've just wandered into a courtroom drama. Much to your relief, your kidnapper isn't a shark, and you have to admit, the glasses do come together in the ensemble. But is instead a short, stocky troll girl in a short-sleeved turtleneck and a pair of garish red crocs. <laughs> the fashion on this one is staggering, especially with the... Is that a sword cane with a dragon's head? It is, because I'm blind and cool. <laughs> but make no mistake, I don't need eyes to smell how guilty you taste. Wow, is every sentence that tumbles out of this troll's mouth going to be weird and uncomfortable? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Predictive reading is just yeah. the same, huh? <laughs> Seems so. <laughs> But enough from you, Cherry Cheeks. His honorable tyranny will only tolerate so much banter before holding you in contempt. You might be developing some contempt yourself, if you're being honest. Well, unless you want to be squeezed until your organs burst from your eyes, you can, t you can take the back talk and let the prosecution get to work. Oh, you'll can't back talk. Uh, is that what being held in contempt means? Fine, you guess you'll be polite and stop interrupting. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Right, now that we have the preamble out of the way... There's a ding from her computer, and her posture immediately switches from confident to frustrated. Ugh, hold on. She strides over to her husk top, tapping the gleaming edge of her cane in front of her as she goes. You wonder what kind of miraculous accessibility contraptions exist on this planet that a blind person can just use. Is she licking the monitor? <laughs> yep, she's licking her filthy fucking computer monitor. Just slathering it up with her teal-tinted saliva, going at it like a husband greeting his war wife after 20 years at sea. Why? Sorry, give me a second. <laughs> no problem, you say. Not like you're going anywhere. <laughs> okay, she's distracted. Now would be a great time to go somewhere. Your powers still seem to be on the fritz, but you think the weight of your incredible ass might shatter this chair if you could get some leverage. <laughs> Abba, Abba, I love, I, I love for once our character is just, nope, not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to be friends with this person. I don't know about this one, chief. <laughs> Should we yeah, utilize our honest. amazing ass? <laughs> it's incredible. Um, Ugh. I kind of want to see the fail your art if we try it. I want to see how it looks if we fail. I want to celebrate. Yeah. You lean forwards onto your feet, take a deep breath, and hop backwards as hard as you can. It worked! 
you scramble up out of the broken chair as your captor turns toward you. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you try to run, but the rope uh, still around your legs has other plans as you trip, try to catch your weight, fail, and just sort of let the momentum of your vaudevillain tumble carry you across the room. You slam into your captor and send both of you flying out the window. Oh, this is way higher up than you thought. You grab onto her and pray for dear life. Hey, you're not falling! That's a relief. You congratulate your agile friend on her quick reflexes and grabbing hold of... Oh. Oh, oh no. Man, that's not as nice as I thought it was going to be. You've heard of a hung jury, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Dang it! The prosecution rests in peace. <laughs> I just wanted art of our dummy fake ass. Terezi <laughs> fucking died. <laughs> this is what I get. This is what you get for utilizing our fat ass. Yeah, our collective while, fat ass. Ah, uh, no. It's another murder caused by our fat ass. Damn. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> One more to the count. <laughs> <laughs> Put a tally mark on the ass. Murder <laughs> victims. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Alright. Wait it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ. Uh, you decide it's best to wait this out. The sword and noose are a bit worrying, but with the plush toys and chalk drawings, it strikes you that this is probably the closest thing Alternia has to a tea party. Which would be adorable if it weren't so depressing. Playing along seems like a prime friend-making activity. Besides, whoever got hurt in a court of law? <coughs> After a few brus br yeah, brusque keystrokes, she's- Breath. Fuck. Uh, she strolls back- <laughs> okay. To her place in the center of the room. Not a word and half asleep, and now she won't shut up. Oh, you, ask, you ask who <laughs> she was talking to. Just some dumb, angry girl who needs to leave me alone until the heat death of the universe. Who even cares anyway? Not me, that's who. Where were we? Crimes? <laughs> Crimes? You're here today to face the highest justice under my authority as Premier League-affiliated legislacerator in training of his Honorable Tyranny's Court. And it is said, and it is with said authority that I accuse you of that most grievous of crimes against the Empire of her imperious condescension. Being different. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. What crime could that possibly be? Breaking and entering? Doping with a clown? You guess she could technically nail you down as an accomplice to murder, but... The crime of... Existing! Uh... What? You're waiting for the other shoe to drop, but the damn thing just seems to be stuck up there. Uh, what did she sh say about being in training? You're beginning to wonder if this, uh... What did she call it? Slaylicitor? Prosecutioner? Public Dexterpidist? What? <laughs> Alright. Uh, you're beginning to wonder if this murder lawyer actually knows what the hell she's talking about. You think I'm making this up? Maybe. Do I really look like the kind of girl who would randomly commit unprompted and unjustified murder on a whim? Possibly. <laughs> look, you've met some weird fucking trolls on this planet, and they all seem to have pretty laissez-faire attitudes about murder, so... No, you know what? Fine. If you're gonna be a pedantic, snot-nubbed little wiggler about it, I'll just recite the whole fucking law verbatim. Article 5, subsection 11, paragraph 68 of the second new codes of Alternian Juris... Uh, oh, God. Juris Payments? Juris pain <laughs> Yeah, Juris yeah. Payments describes your crimes as... Yeah, pain. It would be pain. Oh my Jesus gosh, Christ. <laughs> okay, let me get close. <laughs> <clears throat> Did she, did she do this stuff? Hmm? I muted so you wouldn't have to listen to me to pick up my mic. Oh, nice. Okay. 
being, having been, or possessing the capacity to be in need of material resource consumption for the purpose of curtailing biological expiry, existing, in, of, around, or through imperial territory as one of unclassifiable sanguination, mutant, one of extrasolar orig or origination, alien, or one who plans to commit, has committed, or may possess the capacity to commit high crimes and uh, fish demeanors against her imperial condescension, criminal. There, happy now. Fish demeanors. Fish demeanors. Fish demeanors. <laughs> Can't believe they put puns in the law. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Dang, this girl really knows her stuff. Of course I do. I'm not some fly by lunar cycle troll slaughter consultant. I'm a fucking professional. Clearly. How could you question her experience on the subject of what is and is not technically a crime when there's so many books piled up haphazardly? You definitely are existing as an alien, after all, and you guess that does by definition make you a criminal. Here. And from the look on the uh, from the look of that noose, you doubt the punishment is something as quaint as being thrown in the slammer. So is there an appeals process or she springs forward with surprising agility and presses her face right up against yours, sniffing you with alarming enthusiasm. Your game of candied apple ignorance may convince the pan-scrambled clown fuckers in the cheap seats, but I smell the deception dripping off of you like a delicious marmalade. You'll have to do better than this if you really want to. She sniffs. Want to. She sniffs again. Did Kanaya make this dress? Oh look, and out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say? You and her are great friends, the best! In fact, you think she should message Kanaya right now to clear all this up? You know, like a character witness? I've witnessed your character plenty and it's as bland as they come. Ouch! Not wrong, but hurtful. <laughs> hmm... Hmm... That's certainly not the worst contem contemplative noise you've ever heard. I may have misjudged you. Woo! Retrial! Yeah! If you tell anyone I said that, I'm going to cut off your arms and use them to finger paint bulges on your face until you bleed to death. <laughs> Ow. You decide that keeping this pointlessly mundane secret is definitely in your best interest. <laughs> so, does this mean you're free to go? Not so fast. May have implies possibility, not certainty. Maybe Kanaya gave you this dress because she likes you, or maybe you pressured her into it circumstantially. Maybe you're a delightfully clueless and well-intentioned interloper from beyond the stars. Or maybe you were sent here as a sleeper agent to learn all of our weaknesses so that the entities controlling you can sabotage our future. In cases such as these, I find the best course of action is to leave the verdict up to chance. She produces a double-headed coin with one side scratched out, and you immediately know wh exactly where this is going. Fuck, we've read enough Batman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually. <laughs> but, um, also I would like to point out her, uh, her something about the dress wasn't wrong. It wasn't because she liked us, it's because she didn't want us to die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the terms are simple. Heads, and I release you from your bonds. Tails, and I release you from being alive. Is she really about to take you out like a gangster who just betrayed their duality-themed mob boss? <laughs> <laughs> Before you can request a less Saturday morning cartoon solution, she flips the coin into the air. Well, this is bad. It's bad, and it kind of makes you angry. This doesn't make sense. You didn't do anything, but here you are with a 50-50 chance of getting mersed by a jovial gremlin anyway. Merk. Mer probably yeah, murked, murked, yeah. It's fine. Uh, does she think this is normal? Your head is cleared enough that you could zap away if you really tried, but... Something about this murder lawyer is stuck in your craw. She pisses us off. Mm. <laughs> Her devotion to justice is obvious, but it's a twisted and brutal justice, streamlined for violence and painfully efficient in enabling exactly that, if this mock trial is anything to go by. 
This is the same system that requires insectoid eugenics robots to keep the peace, after all. There's so much wrong here, and she doesn't even see it. Like, metaphorically see it. The coin is falling. Every rotation brings you closer to a fate that, regardless of outcome, wouldn't be fair. You decide to think about what should be fair. Just like that, you're standing next to her. With a scream, you snatch her coin out of the air and hurl it full force through the window. <laughs> Fuck your coin. My coin! Fuck your coin! Sorry, you, sh uh, you shout, but she can't expect you to just accept the whims of chance when your life is on the line. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> because that sucks! It's lame and dumb and really cliche! What is she, a comic book villain? Am I supposed to know what that is? You don't know! Troll culture seems to have a lot of really arbitrary similarities to human culture, and it's honestly very confusing, but that's beside the point. With a broad sweep of your arm, you gesture to her drawing of the honorary Tyrannosaurus or whatever, and ask <laughs> what he would think of your little stunt just now. The trial isn't for him. Uh, we act like it is, but everyone knows he's just a big, hangry monster. <laughs> huh? Then who? It's for the audience, obviously. Formative look. Formative trial. Hmm. By the time you make it to the stand, you're basically dead already. Don't the accused get a chance to defend themselves? Defend? <laughs> Only the outrageously guilty would ever think to defend themselves in a court of law. Ugh. Wow, that's <laughs> fucked up. What's the point of even having a trial, then? Besides the sheer pleasure of watching all of the hope slowly drain from someone's eyes as they confront their immediately approaching and evidently gruesome execution? Yeah, besides that. It's a warning to the seditious of what happens when they cross the line. And that line is, uh, existing? Yep. Yeah. The nonchalance of her answer really... Uh, underlines just how upsetting all of this really is. You remember the law she recited, and one part in particular sticks out to you. Unclassifiable sanguination. Didn't Carcat try to commiserate with you about having mutant blood or something? You know Carcat too? We're, we're doing all of our thoughts out loud this route. Yeah. <laughs> I keep waiting for him to fuss about team leaders, but now he won't shut up about this thing he calls a Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is so worked up about the game, and now they're just over it suddenly. Yeah, that's your fault. Hmm. Karkow would probably have a nuclear conniption if he knew you were about to say this, but you ask her if she's aware of his blood color. Of course I'm aware of it. What do you think I am, blind? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Karkat's a mutant, right? If you remember correctly, that makes him guilty of the same crime you are. Her expression turns sour, and you can tell this time she's spent a lot of time trying not to think about it. You figure she avoided summarily executing you because you're friends with her friends, so she would probably avoid killing Karkat as well. And that's a good thing. Great, in fact. You cannot stress enough how awesome that is. <laughs> But doesn't that strike her as a bit hypocritical, making exceptions for her friends? Does she think that everyone else who dies at court or gets culled in their own hives deserves what they get just because she doesn't know them personally? It doesn't matter what I think. This is just how things are. It sucks, but it would suck a lot worse to be killed for saying so. And then who would protect Carcat? Who would protect... I can't help everyone, Cherry Cheeks. I can barely help my friends. Maybe if I stick to it long enough, I can change things from the inside. That's the best any of us can hope for. I guess that doesn't sound like the worst plan. In fact, it kind of reminds you of... Of... Who? You feel a sadness well up in your heart, so fast and heavy that it knocks you over into her. And without meaning to, you... Knock her out the window again! 
<laughs> Zap! Your vision is swimming. Voices echo in your head, but you can't pick any of them out. You look around, and... Something is watching you. Not maliciously, not yet. Just observing from a curious distance. Not that you can do anything about it while you're clutching your head and trying to put your memories together. You've been circling around this awful, familiar feeling ever since you left Earth, drawn towards it like a singularity, but the closer you get, the less it makes sense. What the fuck just happened? Did you kill me just now? Yes. Is this troll hell? Yes. Troll hell? Do trolls not have an actual name for... Wait, she's here too? <laughs> uh, so I guess I'm a reader didn't notice that Equius made an observation last time. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, here seems like an ambig an ambitious description. That's ambiguous. It's more of an oh, yeah. it's more of an ambiguous nexus of metaphysical reality. Were you reading ahead? <laughs> I guess so. Did it hit the walls? <laughs> <laughs> That's an awfully specific description. Has she been here before? No, but I've been, but I've tasted places like this in my dreams. Great, even more shenanigans. You look around and try to get your bearings, but nothing seems to be in focus. It's all too low resolution, simultaneously too bright and too dark to make sense of. Also, her song is really good. I like it. Oh yeah, it jams. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you okay over there, Cherry Cheeks? Your blood smells really loud right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I love the shit she says. Yeah, I can't hear you. I, can't, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you speak up? I don't, I'm not wearing pants right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you... <laughs> You wouldn't know how to react to that even if you weren't having a memory-induced thought seizure. The pieces are too far apart and you can't quite put it together, but you remember... Friends? Bits of memory hit you, sudden flashes of joy, of violence. Smiling faces, crying faces, bodies, plans. Hope that the world could be made into a better place. What the fuck are you mumbling about? If you fried your think pen, at least let me in on it so I can participate. <laughs> <laughs> you tell her what you can remember, which isn't much. Friends, sadness, dissatisfaction. People who were deeply unhappy with the state of Alternia and faced violence from all sides, just as your new friends do today. Some of them wanted to change it from the inside, and you remember believing that they could. But you get the sense that a lot of time has passed between now and then, and it doesn't seem like Alternia has gotten much better. In fact, it may have gotten worse. It seems like whatever it was your friends tried to do... They failed. Of course they did. What does she mean by that? Even in the context of your nonsense, time-traveling, amnesiac cover story, it's not hard to believe. Compelling idiots have good ideas all the time. That doesn't change the fact that they're idiots. Which is why I'm going to succeed where everyone else had their entrails ripped out by a swarm of drones and died like the scrubs they were. <laughs> I am many things, Cherry Cheeks. An idiot isn't one of them. She flashes a bright and pointed smile, filled with a confidence that you believe with every atom in your body. But you're pretty sure she's not the first person to make you feel that way. Idiots or not, the friends you used to have were just as sure of themselves then as she is now. And what good did it do? Honestly, you doubt that intelligence or competence has much to do with it at all. You think about the drones you barely avoided at Karkat's Hive, and your brief exposure to what this planet calls a criminal justice system. For as violent and unjust as things could be on Earth, at least there was some pretext that the system existed to serve the people. Here, it's just murder. 
You aren't sure that's a system that anyone can salvage. Her smile melts into a frown, and... You really should ask what this troll's name is. <laughs> Terezi Pyro. Terezi doesn't sound particularly happy, as she slumps against a debatably extant wall and slides down into a crouch, her face is a mask of barely contained emotion. I can tell why Carcat would like you. You're very depressing. <laughs> yeah. You chuckle and sit down a respectable distance away from her. You definitely don't mean to be depressing, but you have a knack for digging up drama. The hazards of forging new friendships, you guess? If Riska saw us right now, she'd derisively laugh herself into an aneurysm. Teresi knows Riska. That's one way to put it. We were practically sisters before she broke the rules and ruined everything. How do you know her? Oh, you know, you played some flarp, killed some kids, felt guilty about it, threw Riska's mom into a volcano. <laughs> wow, you really have gotten around. What's the mom? <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, you'd think that was just about the saddest thing you ever heard get said if you didn't already know what a Lucis was. You killed her Lucis? So she's... That explains why she's been messaging me. I knew it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Teresi is laughing, but it doesn't sound like any laughter you've ever heard. I can't fucking believe it. Circuit figured her shit out just in time for me to have my own identity crisis. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet she thinks everything's supposed to be fine between us now just because... Wanna know a secret, Cherry Cheeks? Might as well add another one to the pile, you say? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm shocked. Mm. I never have, and now I don't think I ever will. I can't believe this 13-year-old doesn't have a life plan. Yeah, but... Add on to, like, what we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oof. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Like, they, they were bleak before, but look at it now! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's bleak. You guess hey. you're sorry? <laughs> sorry, guys, I keep going ahead. How dare you! <laughs> it's not your fault. You haven't told me anything I didn't already know. Her lips are trembling as she reaches behind her and pulls out a box of chalk? And then removes a red piece. You think this is a weird time for artistic expression, but... Oh, she's eating it. <laughs> Terezi offers you a piece. You don't want to be rude, but you also really don't want to eat chalk. She shrugs and crunches on it like unshelled lobster. You guess you have to take that in stride. The more important thing is that Terezi is inconsolably sad, which sucks because you're the only person in a position to console her. Oh, God. I don't know if giving a hug to a blind person with a sword out is a good idea. Yeah. At least not without warning. <laughs> <laughs> As, sh she'll smell us coming. Yeah, she'll smell us. Should we yeah. try anyway? Stinky bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's give her, Terezi, we're Let's gonna hug you. That's yeah, a threat. <laughs> you don't know how to fix this. You don't know how to make Terezi feel better. The best you she's tough to starve. Yeah. <laughs> Probably needs this. The best you can think to do is put your arms around her. Despite the fact that you're a complete stranger who basically just kidnapped her, she welcomes the embrace. I hated her for what she did. Not to me, but to our friends. All who went to war over it. After our truce, we cut ties. My hope was that she would avoid hurting anyone else. But deep down, I knew I would have to kill her eventually. In the name of justice. Aww. Hmm. 
She did terrible things, but... So did I. We did some of them together. Why wasn't I culpable? Why did I blame her for something we did to each other? You think it's regrettably natural to blame the person in front of you when you get hurt, especially when the real problem is too big and esoteric to stab through the chest with a sword cane. Ruska did what she did because she had to. So did I. We both deserved the revenge we wrought on each other. But we were all victims of the big picture. It made us what we were, and sure we would do what we did. Every little injustice started there. And then we fight. Whoever painted the picture smiles and laughs. Because they know they've already won. She sits up a little straighter, and you feel your spine follow suit almost on its own. Fuck that. Terezi slips out of your arms and stands up, pulling you to your feet with her. Her entire demeanor has changed. She's practically vibrating with determination. Take me to Vriska's hive. I'm assuming there's a, that's a thing you can do. Oh! Yeah, that's a thing you can do. Your mind is still buzzing, but talking to Terezi has calmed that storm just enough for you to focus. As you take her hand, you spare a last look around this bizarre, impossible space. You still feel watched, but it's distant now. Maybe even approving? You have so many questions, but those will have to wait. Right now, you've got work to do. Zap! Hey girl! Hey girls! Before you even see where you landed, Terezi marches up to a very surprised Vriska and backs her up against the wall. She stops just a few feet away, looking up at the Cerulean Spider Girl with anger on her face. Despite their difference in stature, Vriska is... intimidated? You caught her off guard, and Terezi is unflinching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the room is completely silent. You see Terezi clenching her fists. She looks one wrong move away from unleashing hell. This isn't quite what you had in mind when you brought her here, and you really hope your new friends aren't about to fight each other. <laughs> Something in the air changes. <laughs> yeah. You aren't, uh, entirely sure what's happening, but something is definitely happening, and you figure it's best to just cross your arms and pretend you don't exist. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Terezi's- Can y'all talk, please? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, Vriska, don't talk, I forgot to do how to do your voice. <laughs> <laughs> don't say shit. Terezi's posture softens. Her hands relax as she breathes a soft sigh. Friska straightens up, letting her own tension dissipate. You guess you're feeling a little less tense yourself. <laughs> when Friska cracks a hesitant smile, Terezi leans back. She's sniffing the air intensely, which feels like a good sign. Everyone's getting a little looser, a little more casual. Definitely an improvement. Then they both start cackling, slapping their knees like they've just heard the most hilarious knock-knock joke in history. You sure would like to get on in on the joke too, but you figure it would probably be rude to ask. Terezi <laughs> was just thinking really hard at Ruska. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. And then they hug? You're not exactly sure what just happened, but you figure hugging is a powerful platonic friend activity, and even in the worst of times. It's gotten you this far, after all. Yeah, that's all this is. Just two gal pals hugging it out. It's so sweet you could cry. When they separate, Terezi meanders over to the window, overlooking the pit where Vriska's Lucis used to live. So, she is dead. Fuck you, talk, damn it. <laughs> I am real broken up about it, too. Ruska winks at you. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. 
Terezi turns and leans up against the windowsill. You have a lot to make up for. That's why I've been messaging you. I want to apologize, okay? I don't want your apology, Briska. I... I have a lot to make up for, too. There's definitely some kind of something going on in this room that you're completely oblivious to. You wonder what went down between these girls that they can't even talk about what they're talking about. What do you mean? <laughs> There's so much injustice in the world. Every drop of deliciously innocent and painfully extracted blood on this planet is just paint for the fishy fucks up top to play with. And the worst part is that we're complicit. We revel in it. Uh, we revel in it, even God. <laughs> I reveled in it. Terezi, are you? They could never make this violence good, so they had to make it fun. And I, I had so much fun hurting people. Who knows how long I would have gone on like that if it hadn't been for our weird invasive species of a friend here. <laughs> Terezi wipes a tear from her cheek and smiles at you and you feel a huge wave of relief. Friends! Hey. With a former lawyer in training! You sure know how to pick them. <laughs> hey, we've been called friend. Root over. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> GG. For once, Riska, I want to revel in something good. I want them to feel the razor edge of their own, of their own justice. I want their blood to stain the dirt beneath my feet like the pathetic wiggling insects they are. But I... I can't do it alone. I don't want to do it alone. Oh. <laughs> you watch as Terezi takes in a measured breath. For just a moment, you can imagine her standing in a room full of determined people, just behind the person everyone else would call a leader, smiling a wicked smile. She's not the one who commands the stage, you think. She's the one who controls the spotlight. Hmm. She's the one who knows what happens next. Bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro! <laughs> yeah, bro! Um, I'm not sure what we are together anymore, Vriska. I've hated you. I've... I felt a lot of things. What I know is that we're dangerous, and fate seems determined to make us rivals. That almost sounds fun, doesn't it? We could fight for the rest of our lives if we wanted to. Each the scourge of the other until one or both of us winds up dead. They tell stories about us for a long time. <laughs> but I don't want that to happen anymore. Do you? No! Aww. You haven't known Vriska very long, but this is a side of her you've never seen. You doubt many people have. It's actually really awkward. You should probably go, but your prying curiosity and desire for interpersonal closure keeps you glued to the spot. <laughs> Doesn't hurt that Terezi's words are very- they hit! <laughs> oh yeah. We had the right idea in the wrong circumstances. But this time, I think we can really do something together. So let's try this again. Riska, will you be my scourge sister? Uh, uh yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> then let's get to fucking work. They share a look that you can't quite read, but you get the feeling that this was a resounding success. Yeah! Scourge Sisters! <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Alright, before we start the next one, I gotta piss. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna get a water. Alright. Cut I'm... the VOD. Yeah. Before you, wait, before you cut the VOD. YouTube uh -huh. peeps, check out the links. It might yeah. be in the description. Yeah. 
all the Twitch peeps, will will you you'll see no change. Yeah. Yeah, you'll hear it at the very end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Get ready for secret stream times where you get to secret. hear it go get water. Aw, yeah, secrets. <laughs> and you get to hear all the secret sounds that happen. Like maybe an ambulance might drive by and I'd be upset. Yeah. All right. Uh, BRB, y'all. <laughs>